Heck oh, yeah. 44, look at that, oh, Joe. Look at that. Bow, 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 bow. He's cheating. Bow, 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 bow. He's cheating. <laughs> hey, don't give away my secrets, dude. Oh, hi folks, I'm Mike, and welcome to my channel. If you've seen any of my videos, then I'm sure you know, I'll be talking about Pinewood Derby racing. So, in today's video, I'm gonna go over a few of the basics. Initially, I had no intentions on making this video because there are hundreds of videos already available that discuss what I'm gonna talk about today. But someone convinced me that if I put this video together, it would help people understand my other videos better. So, in today's video, I'll be going over energy, I'll be going over friction, I'll be going over weight distribution, I'll be going over wheel weight, and finally I'll discuss rail riding. So stay with me, you might find this helpful. Now I'd imagine most people watching this video are not engineers. So I plan on putting things into layman's terms. Now I remember when I first started, those people that helped me, Cash, Mid-Atlantic King, they simplified everything. I found that to be very helpful. So I'm gonna try to do the same thing. So the first thing I'll discuss is potential energy. Now it's a pretty simple formula. It's weight times height. So if two Pinewood Derby cars weigh exactly the same and one is higher in elevation than the other, the higher car will have more potential energy. If two cars are the same height, but one weighs more, well that car will have more potential energy. Since everybody's racing on the same track, the height thing's gonna be a wash. So it's important you maximize your weight. Now, although five ounces actually equals 141.7 grams, I'm gonna suggest you start your car at 143 grams with an easy way to lower the weight if you have to. Many people that I know use tungsten putty. You can install it and remove it really easy. Now, the reason I'm suggesting 143 grams is because at your race, if they use a scale that only measures to the one-tenth of an ounce, 143 grams should register five ounces. So you'll know that it's impossible for any of your competition to be bringing a car that has more potential energy. So that leads me into the next area I'd like to discuss. What steals the energy? What steals the energy? Why, if everyone's racing a five ounce car, they're all the same height and elevation, why aren't they all the same speed? Why are some cars faster than others? Well, it's simply because the faster cars have done a better job at eliminating those things that steal energy. The first of those things is friction. So every point of contact on a Pinewood Derby car creates some friction. So if you carefully consider how to lower the amount of friction at each contact point, you will improve the speed of your car. You can see that I've included this diagram that shows each contact point, and I'm gonna start right here at the back wheels. Now you'll notice that the rear wheels have been canned three degrees. Every drill jig that I'm familiar with is set up to drill the rear axle holes at a three degree cant. Now that's beneficial for a couple different reasons. One, it'll force the wheel to migrate out to the head of the axle. Now the underside of a shiny polished axle head will create less friction than if the wheel was rubbing the wooden body. And two, by canning the rear axles, the wheel will have to ride on its edge, which creates less friction than if the entire wheel tread were to make contact with the track surface. You know, also, if your rules permit, you should consider coning the inner and outer hub of the wheel. That will reduce friction. Here's what a stock wheel looks like. You can see that it has the two steps on the outer hub and the inner hub is relatively flat. Now you can see by coning these hubs, a smaller area will make contact with both the axle head and the side of the body. Okay, folks, next I'll discuss weight distribution. So if we go back to the original formula of weight times height, it should be apparent that the further the weight is placed to the rear of the car, the more potential energy that car will have. So theoretically, if you placed all the weight directly to the rear of the car, that car would have the most potential energy. But unfortunately, that car would pull a wheelie and it would become very unstable. 
So ideally, you'll want to find a happy median. Now, most videos I've seen recommend a center of gravity of about three quarters to one inch in front of the rear axle. Now, I don't disagree with that. I just measure differently. So rather than measuring the center of gravity, I check how much weight is on my front wheel. You got to remember that front wheel is what guides this car all the way down the track. So I'll start by adding a tungsten chunk behind the axles then add tungsten cubes and putty directly in front of the rear axle and slowly start rolling those cubes forward until I have about 15 grams on that front wheel. Now for scout racing with stock wheels and axles on a wooden track, I recommend about 15 grams on the front wheel. Now if you're allowed to use machined wheels and aftermarket axles and you'll be racing on a good track, you can probably get away with a little less weight on the front wheel and you'd probably find a little speed. Okay guys, so let's discuss wheel weight. Now earlier, we went over how friction stole some of our potential energy. Well, the wheels steal some of our potential energy also. And a heavier wheel will steal more of our potential energy than a light wheel. And it's not the same as the energy required to push an object down the track. Because the wheels are spinning, they steal the energy at a different rate. So it's important to use the lightest wheel your rules allow. Now, if you're permitted, you should consider using aftermarket wheels. A stock wheel can weigh up to 2.7 grams and aftermarket wheels can weigh half of that. And in addition, when you're buying an aftermarket wheel, the hubs will be coned and the runout will have been removed. And by the way, anybody looking, you can find aftermarket wheels on my website, reeseraces.com. Now I get that most rules don't allow that. So if you can't use machined wheels, I'm gonna suggest you check out some of the colored wheels. It's my experience that they can weigh considerably less than the black wheels. Now, if your rules say that you have to use the wheels that came in the kit, I would suggest you buy a few extra tubes of black wheels and weigh them. I think you'll find that the three molds will be the lightest. So now let's talk about rail riding. When I was a child competing in Pinewood Derby, it was a general consensus that you needed to build a car that went perfectly straight. The only problem was they didn't go perfectly straight. As a result, the car would typically bounce back and forth off of the rail, scrubbing speed. Now the car that bounced the least off the rail was typically crowned the champion. Nowadays, opinions are different. You'll find that the fastest cars will ride the rail. Now rail riding is nothing more than adding a small amount of steer so that the car will drift into the rail. By doing this, the car will use the rail to guide it straight down the track without it bouncing back and forth. Now there's no question that you'll be adding some friction by having the front wheel in contact with the rail and the more steer you need to add, the more friction you're creating. But my timer tells me that the amount of friction I'm creating is small in comparison to have that car bounce back and forth off that rail all the way down the track. So here's how I do it. I'll bend the front axle and I'll slot the head. I'll assemble the car and then I'll put it down my tuning board. Now my tuning board is 48 inches long and it drops one inch from left to right. Now because it's granite, I did also put a piece of glass on top. I don't want my wheels touching that granite. Then I'll twist the front axle in very small increments until the car drifts about four inches across the 48 inch length. Now if you don't have a track to tune on, I would leave it right there. Now if you're able to test on a track, I would remove a small amount of steer until the car started to wiggle. Once it wiggled, I would add a quarter to a half inch of steer and I would call it done. If you've made it this far, I would have to assume you're as addicted to this little hobby as I am. So please, if you're interested, like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to pick a name at random and send that person some laser cut bodies. And we'll see you in the next one.